Good afternoon. I'm Kimberly Edwards with cookingwithkimberly.com and I just got in from a workout. It is hot out. Um, I need something to eat quickly and I want some protein. So instead of doing just a typical grilled cheese sandwich, I know I've showed you how to do Vegemite in grilled cheese. Um, I didn't want just a grilled cheese sandwich cheese. Yeah, it does have some protein in it, but I need some more substance, something, anything. So what I decided to do was use some of the chicken that we had um, cooked up. We barbecued it, and I just, actually this is the breasts, and I just picked it off the bone, just some meat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a grilled cheese chicken and tomato sandwich, um, and it's going to be a little more exciting than the regular grilled cheese, although it's the same technique as grilled cheese, I suppose. So what I have, I just have, I'm, I'm eating two sandwiches, I'm hungry. Um, so I have two, enough for two sandwiches, bread, just plain old, whatever kind of bread you wanna use, you can use whatever you like, it's your kitchen, okay? Key is softened butter. What you wanna do is you want to butter each side that's going to touch the pan. Now I pre, I have uh, my fry, large frying pan is preheating on the stove, on the, on the cooktop, it's on like two, so it's like a low level. I just wanna get it warm and, and ready. And by the time I'm ready to put my grilled cheese on there, it'll be nice and hot, okay? So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna organize these pieces of bread. See how they're shaped like that? They fit perfectly like that. So you want to be aware of how they fit together. Sometimes bread is really weird to fit together, so be aware of that. And I'm just going to bread butter sorry, the outsides of this bread. I'm going to put the nice side, or the inside part down so that the butter side is up on one side. Come on back. Make sure, yeah, that's the outside. Okay, and I'm going to put that uh, buttered side up just so that we don't make a mess on our cutting board and, or wherever you're creating this, okay? Now the other side needs to be buttered as well. And I'm going to butter that now. And I'm going to put butter side to buttered side. I'm only very lightly buttering it. I don't like to use a lot of butter. It's just extra calories for no reason. You just don't want it to stick to the pan. And sometimes I don't like putting um, all kinds of oil in the bottom of a pan, especially when I'm just doing a grilled cheese. You just need to make sure that this gets nice and toasted on the outside. Basically everything inside of a grilled cheese is cooked already. Um, you wouldn't want to put raw chicken in. It would take forever for it to cook and everything would be burnt and gross. So now what I have is I have my two pieces of butter, <clears throat> two pieces of bread buttered on one side, butter to butter. Okay. So now I'm going to assemble on top of that. Okay. So I'm pretty much going to just load this up with cheese. I'm just, I didn't feel like grating cheese today. This is already ready. So I'm going to use this and it's already grated. So I'm just loading this up with cheese making sure that you get the outside edges. It is going to melt, so you'll be good. Um, if you're having, if you have a lot of ingredients to go on the inside of your grilled cheese sandwich, sometimes you may wanna use a little bit more cheese so that everything kind of sticks together and holds very nicely. You might not get as much of a cheese flavor otherwise, or the whole purpose of a grilled cheese is all ooey gooey melty goodness, right? So go ahead, put your cheese on. Whatever kind of cheese you like. You can use sharp cheddar, you can use mozzarella, you can use whatever you have in your fridge, basically. You just want something that's gonna melt, right? And stick everything together. So now what I'm going to do is I just washed a regular old tomato, just cutting the top out of it. Because you don't wanna eat that. That can go in your compost. I used to feed it to my hedgehogs when they were around. Um, now I'm gonna slice with a very sharp knife, sharpen your knives, right? Don't hurt yourself. It's very difficult to cut tomatoes very thinly without a very, very sharp knife. So I'm going to just slice some nice thin slices. I don't want huge slices. Tomatoes are a very wet ingredient and you don't want a wet, gooey grilled cheese sandwich, but I do want the flavor of that, of the tomato in there. So I just cut some nice slices of that. I'm going to arrange that on top of my, on top of my cheese. It's beautiful, exactly what I want. Okay, and then I'm going to arrange this chicken. Now you can pull it apart, you can do whatever. You can also use, if you get half cold meat, the like sliced cold meat that you get from your deli or from your grocery store, I guess, you could use that as well. This just happens to be what I have and it's nice and fresh and 
it's going to be even more delicious than using processed meat. Um, I am a very big advocate of you trying to use less processed foods. And uh, not only does it taste better, but you'll feel better about yourself. It's better for you. So that's, hold on one second. Now spice wise, I mean the sky's the limit. It's whatever you really enjoy or feel like. Um, I like pepper on everything, so I'm going to freshly crack lots of pepper on here. Very nice. Um, instead of using fresh garlic or, or onion, I do like that flavor. However, I don't want to put raw garlic or onion. Now what you could do is you could caramelize some onions with some garlic in a separate pan if you want to and really cook it up nice. Or you can just get a little bit of powder and just sprinkle it ever so lightly to get the je ne sais quoi that you're looking for. Just wanted a little more savory, that's all. You don't have to put it. You could put you could put fresh herbs in this, you could put fresh basil, or you could put fresh parsley, or even cilantro if you wanted to. Um, it's whatever you feel like. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna bring you over to my stove and I'm gonna show you how I do this, okay? with my preheated frying pan. Come with me. Okay, there's my pan. Very, very simple. And here I come. So now I have these assembled on my cook, sorry, on my, cook, my chopping board. And this is what they look like. There are two pieces of bread stuck together with my um, toppings on the inside. Now what I do is I just take that first piece of bread that's already buttered, put it in the pan, and now I put this right on top. No mess, no muss, no fuss. So now, bam, that's in my frying pan. Now this should only take a couple sides, uh, a couple minutes per side. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for a golden brown Crunch, crust on the outside of like toasted it, right? Hold on. And again, everything's already cooked on the inside. I'm just looking to heat this through, melt this cheese, and get the outside just nice and, and golden brown. I'm gonna grab a plate. And there we go. Now you can you can leave this for a little bit. You might want to put it on medium low heat. It's only going to take a few minutes, so just bear with me. I'm just going to clean off this cook cutting board. Okay, there's nothing in, on that board that's um, salmonella-like or anything like that. Now, if you, you tried to use some raw ingredients, make sure you wash that off very, very carefully. That was just grated cheese and pepper and crumbs and stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff, ladies and gentlemen. This is all going in your sandwich anyway, okay? So I'm just checking this out. Now, I wasn't going to make you wait, but I'm going to make you wait today because this shouldn't take too long. Now, grilled cheese are so fun and so easy, but you know what? You can also experiment with other things on the inside other than cheese, melty stuff like peanut butter or something like that. Uh, there's often times where I will do a, like a grilled peanut butter and banana sandwich or something of that nature. It's so good, so delicious. If you've never tried it, don't bash it. I'm also gonna grab my rhubarb pickles that I've made um, before. I often like to eat pickles with my grilled cheese sandwiches. Just a little tangy something something different. And it's very, very, sealed well and I can't open it so hold on that's the whole point of you putting things in jars in the fridge is that it seals well and I still can't open it okay hold on a second this is real kitchen cooking everybody Now, if you can't open your jars, a good trick is to run it under hot water, just the lid. And then you hit it with, I don't know, something that's nice and hard, like an end of a knife. 
I've just opened it, but I'm going to show you what I did. So you run it under hot water and you just tap it around the outsides. It releases the seal a little bit and you can open it easy. Voila! Pretty excited about these rhubarb pickles because there's something new that I don't usually get to have. I've just experimented with them with you guys. I'm going to leave the link um, in the blog post for you. Those. And I'm enjoying my homemade lemonade that I made this morning for you guys. All right, this should be ready to flip over. I wish you could see a little closer. I might bring you over as soon as I flip it. All right, that's perfect. Now be careful turning it over because you do have a whole bunch of ingredients. Usually when it's just grilled cheese, it doesn't ooze out the sides too much as, as long as you kept it um, within the crust. Um, but when you have bigger ingredients to deal with, bigger fish to fry, so to speak, um, be careful because they can fall out pretty easy. And this looks awesome and perfect, exactly what I want. I'm going to show you. That's what they look like on one side. And that was just a couple minutes, as you guys know. This is not time lapse. This is real time. This is real cooking. And you can whip this up for your kids in like 10, 15 minutes flat um, after school or for a snack for you or for lunch, whatever you're looking for. It's going to be delicious and simple. All right, this should take a little bit less time on the other side. Usually the frying pan is more heated. The sandwich is actually heated through more. It doesn't take nearly as long to get the other side browned as the first side. That's pretty good rule of thumb. Same goes with if you're searing a chicken breast or you're pan sauteing fish. Um, the first side usually takes longer to brown, so keep that in mind. Usually if you're doing like a piece of fish or a piece of chicken, um, I usually cut down the other side about maybe about two minutes. You could even cut off um, to be able to brown that very nicely. Okay. This reminds me of sandwiches that I used to make in, um, in Australia when I lived there. I used to, one of the first things, it was before I went to university, mind you, and I wasn't cooking very much then. I hadn't uh, missed my mom's cooking enough, I guess. And when I lived there, I started making, learning how to make simple things, and my mom would help me on the phone or, or my roommates. And um, probably one of the first things I learned to make was a grilled cheese sandwich all by myself. And... Uh, when I was there, I used to always make tomato with ham and, and all kinds of cool stuff. They also used to have it at our softball diamond. We used to have clubs we played. And um, at the end, they, they serve beverages and alcohol and food at the clubhouse. So in between games, usually there was a couple games during the day, the juniors and the seniors, the males and the females. Um, it's not really like that here in Canada, but in Australia, that's the way it is. It's more of a family. And they would always, always have French fries with chippy salt, which is like chicken flavored salt, and grilled cheese sandwiches. And you could get tomatoes and ham and chicken in them and stuff like that. And I always used to get that. And when you'd get it, it would be so hot and ooey You'd always burn your mouth, but you'd always have your chips next <laughs> to continue eating. So this kind of reminds me of uh, back in the day. That was a lot of fun. Okay, and you'd be hungry, like really hungry from softball. Sheesh. Okay, I'm gonna bring you back over there and I'm gonna show you my creation. Bear with me. Here we go. Awesome. All right, so here's my perfectly done grilled cheese sandwiches. They're gorgeously browned and toasted. hot pan. All right. And my plate. I'm going to grab a fork. Okay. Now I always like to cut them on the bias just because it's prettier and cooler. My mom used to do that for me. Don't you just love moms? They do the coolest stuff for you. All right. Now this is ooey gooey goodness. It's all melted, there's chicken, there's tomato in there. It's all, look at that, and it's pretty healthy for you. The only thing that's really bad for you there is, I mean, depending on, on what kind of cheese you use, how much you use, um, that's great, it, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not too high in fat, but it does, also does have protein in it and calcium and all kinds of other good stuff for you. Sometimes you gotta take the good with the bad. And uh, the chicken, that's very um, low calorie. It's uh, low in fat. It's um, just chicken breast, lean chicken breast. 
And the tomato, I mean, that's just a veggie, guys. Simple stuff. The bread, uh, you can use healthier breads. You can use, uh, like, full whole grain and, and whatever you want. Make it healthy, but make it delicious, guys. Okay, so I'm going to grab some of these little rhubarb pickles. And see how we're doing here. Bam. And I'm also going to have a bite, but I'm allowing it to cool off, as you can tell, so you guys aren't going to laugh at me. <laughs> okay. There's that. Now those watermelon pickles, they are, they have a really interesting brine that I put in them. So make sure you check out that recipe. It's kind of cool. Okay, we're gonna try this. Let's get rid of this. What's better than an after workout snack? And the heat, um, then homemade lemonade and a quick healthy grilled cheese sandwich, really? Mm. That's delicious. And it's exactly what I wanted. That'll work. I'm not mad at all. All right, guys. Make sure you check me out on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly. Follow me on Twitter at cooking with Kim E with a capital E. And follow me on Facebook. Like my fan page. Love my fan page. Comment. Let me know what's going on. Let me tell you what kind of sandwiches you make. It's facebook.com slash cooking with Kimberly. I hope you guys enjoy the sunshine, enjoy your family and your peeps, enjoy your life, eat deliciously. Ciao, guys.